and welcome back to another episode of Community Lens. I am joined in the studio today with the ever fabulous executive director of CAS, <laughs> David Gibbs. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are going to learn a little bit more about their organization. For those who don't know, find out about some of their resources for the community, any events and programs that you should be aware of, and then what is in store for the future of CAS. <laughs> so let's go right into it. Sure. Hello, David. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> Feeling a little bit, got a cold coming on it's, here. It's the mixture <laughs> of the, the strange weather in the air it's, and, yeah. you know, but you're... So if I sound particularly resonant this you're morning... You're strong, and, you're going to overcome this, you're going to overcome this. So how long have you been with CAS for? It's been almost three and a half years. It started in September 2014. Okay. Yeah. And for those who might not know, what is CAS as an acronym and what is sure. its purpose of operating? Sure. Um, CAS stands for Community Action Agency of Somerville. And uh, our mission is, in a nutshell, to end poverty in Somerville. And we do that by working with uh, individuals and families to help them improve their situation. And we also do a lot of advocacy and policy work aimed at trying to get at the systemic root causes of poverty. Wow, that's a lofty mission. It is, isn't it? It <laughs> gets you uh, out of bed in the morning. <laughs> uh, how long has CAS been around for? It was, uh, it was founded in 1981 by a guy named Jack Hamilton, who many people in the community will remember. Mm -hmm. uh, he just passed away a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, but he ran the organization into 2008, I believe. So, wow. yeah, we've got deep roots. Yeah, no, that's a great. A lot of the nonprofits here in Somerville, I feel like, have very deep that's roots. That's true, yep. Yeah. Um, and I've seen a lot of just change and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so for people who are like, okay, great, CAS is an established organization. How could I maybe be of benefit to some of the resources? What are the resources that exist? Sure. So um, we have two main programs right now. And I say right now because as with most nonprofits, when funding comes in, you get to do mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. So, But right now we run Head Start for both Cambridge and Somerville. It's about 270 kids at a time in that program. Um, a lot of people think of Head Start as a preschool program, and it certainly is that, but it's really a, a family support program. Um, when kids come into the program, we immediately start working with their entire family, mm. from grandparents to babies, wow. um, to make sure that anything that would stand in the way of their children being successful in school, in life, whatever, mm -hmm. is addressed and at least, you know, begin to work on those things. And, it's very um, holistic. It is very holistic. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a big network of, of uh, you know, providers in the community that we talk with constantly and are referring people to and helping to coordinate that sort of thing. So it's sort of like a Head Start is kind of a one-stop one shop. Mm -hmm. You know, you come in for the preschool piece, but we can get you into drug and alcohol counseling. We can get you help with you know, a domestic violence situation. We can help you with your housing situation. It's anything that's an issue for that family, we can work on. Wow, um, so you're covering the gamut. Yep. Um, and then our other big program right now is the Homelessness Prevention Program, mm. which it works with people who are unstably housed but not yet homeless. Um, so that could mean they've got an eviction notice in hand or their building is about to go condo, which is mm -hmm. happening more and more, mm -hmm. or just, you know, the, the rent is going up, they're, they're worried about being able to pay the taxes on the home that they own, you know, things like that come up all the time. And again, we do whatever is necessary to try to keep them in their home, mm -hmm. whatever that might be. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's like, you know, a phone call to the landlord to resolve a misunderstanding. Sure. Um, sometimes it means going all the way through the court eviction process, and wow. we do that with them. We partner with uh, Cambridge and Somerville Legal Services for the really tough cases. Some of them we just hand straight off to Castles and they take them. Um, but we work closely with them. We work closely with the Somerville Homeless Coalition, as mm -hmm. you might expect. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we're not successful and, un, you know, the unfortunate happens and these folks become homeless, we can hand them off to the Homeless Coalition who helps them find shelter. Um, but we also do a lot of work with families who are, you know, if we know that somebody is going to lose their housing, then we'll be working with them to try to find an alternate as quickly as possible. So between us and the Homeless Coalition, we're, we may not be able to keep them in Somerville, but we can keep them housed. Right, you know. right, which is 
Very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. And these services, is there an affordability to them or accessibility? Yeah, so we don't charge anything for starters. Everything we do is free. Um, the Both of these programs have uh, income limitations that are set by the federal government, okay. which funds these two programs. Um, basically, it's a little bit complicated, but basically they're both accessible to people who are making up to about 125% of the federal poverty level. Okay. So for a family of four, that's roughly $30,000 a mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Anything below that, and we can, you know, we can help that family. That's huge. Um, one of the reasons that I spend most of my time fundraising mm -hmm. is because we want to be able to help families who are over that limit as mm -hmm. well. There are plenty of them that need help. And um, you know, thirty thousand dollars in Somerville doesn't go very far. Sure doesn't. It'd be, you'd, be, uh, <clears throat> yeah. it, you'd be really struggling at that level. And the same is true at forty or fifty thousand at this time. Yeah. So, um, if I can bring in money that doesn't have the restrictions attached to it that the federal dollars do, then we can help those families, and we do. Mm -hmm. we, we're able to do that a fair amount. Wow. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned earlier about, because um, you were talking about the different fundraising efforts that you're doing, mm. um, are there any events that are happening that folks can come out to support? There are. You? Funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> so the Comedy Studio, mm -hmm. which is a, a great venue that was in Harvard Square for many years, is moving to a new permanent home at the Bow Street Market. They'll be in there by the middle of the summer, we're told. And uh, they are very generously doing three benefit shows this spring. Uh, all of the proceeds will go to Community Action Agency of Somerville. Wonderful. They did one last night at Brass Union. I was there and I laughed my head off. It was fantastic. <laughs> the next one is going to be at Sally O'Brien's on Sunday, March 4th. Uh, and the last one, I'm not sure of the venue yet. I believe it's on March 27th. But okay. Keep an eye out. You can Google the Comedy Studio. Um, our social media will be cool. publicizing it too. So yeah. ways that people can help support yep. your organization. Yep. Yep. Um, and maybe if there's any individuals out there who want to do a, a benefit concert or any ideas. Yeah. You know, a really easy thing um, <clears throat> to do is a house party. Wonderful. Yeah. Very, I have a very small simple. apartment, so it'd be a very so intimate house party. You can do one in a small apartment, but <clears throat> you don't have to do a house party in a house. You could do a house party at a local restaurant, That's for example. That's true. Yeah, we've had house parties at Slum Brew. Oh my gosh, um, a great idea. Other places, yeah. You just invite all your friends, and usually the, the restaurant is willing to kick in a little bit of the proceeds. Yeah, um, yeah. And Slum Brew is a great place, yeah, too. They're always yeah, happy wonderful. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of, lots of places around town that will participate mm. in this kind of thing. Yeah. So. Good idea. Yeah, it's an excuse to <laughs> excuse to get all your friends together and support a good cause at the same time. <laughs> um, so 2018, here we are. Yes. Um, what are some uh, upcoming goals or, or you know optimistic um, visions that you have for mm. for Cass? Well, that's a really good question. Um, I think for 2018. Um, our focus is going to remain on being as accessible as we possibly can uh, to everybody in the community. Um, we are hiring, let's see, we're hiring a new development manager to help with fundraising and marketing. We're hiring a new intake person uh, for our front desk. So, you know, and you walk in the door mm -hmm. and we start helping Customer the minute you walk in. Huge, absolutely. Yes. Um, and we're working through some transitions in the leadership of Head Start, mm -hmm. um, which is going really well. Um, you know, we've been running Head Start for 35 years, and uh, it's a great program. One of the things I love about the program is that so many people have stayed on the faculty for so long. Mm, um, that speaks highly to, to other you know, aspects of yeah, the Yeah, we've got about 70 employees, and I would say Certainly, more than half of them have been with us for more than fifteen years. Wow. Yeah, and that's, some and and literally some for over thirty. Yeah. So we've got a lot of stability there. It also means that you know over the next half decade or so, we're looking at some people transitioning out, right. and we're Preparing thinking about how that. to how mm -hmm. to get good people in to keep things going smoothly. Right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, so leadership growth and yeah. development for the organization. Yep. All healthy, healthy Absolutely. trajectories Absolutely. for Cass's future. That's right. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, anything else that we should let these fine folks know about? Well, <clears throat> I would be remiss if I didn't say something about sort of the advocacy and policy side of this yes. thing. Um, you know, 
It, it's no secret to anybody, Somerville is a city with a serious housing crisis going on. Mm -hmm. It's becoming less and less affordable. And there are an awful lot of development projects going on all over the city. And I think if, if people want to help, one of the biggest things you can do is become educated about what the different development decisions mean mm -hmm. for the community. You know, mm -hmm. when, when you see an empty lot in your block, and it's like, what's going to be built there? Is mm. it going to be, are there going to be jobs in this new building? Uh, will there be units that are affordable to low and moderate income people? Or is it going to be, you know, very expensive studio condominiums or, sure. you know, yeah. learn what's, what these things are, are w learn what's happening in your neighborhood right. and uh, start talking to your older people about mm -hmm. that because there are a lot of, People can have a lot of influence in these decisions. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's not all done at City Hall. There's a lot of opportunity for community input. And CAS is in those conversations, but we yet cannot do it alone, obviously. Absolutely. You know, the more people that are involved, the better. Yeah. yeah, right. And no, that's a really great point to bring up. And, and I think just to echo that, there's a lot of community organizations who care <coughs> about the future yes. of Somerville and yes. are trying to also join forces, not to be, you know, apprehensive to change, but just to kind of make sure we're thinking mindfully about the inclusion of, yes. of folks who have been here, businesses that have been here, if, with the preparation of all of this. That's right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> new uh, construction and new yeah. projects and stuff. People are always surprised, not, not always, some people are, <laughs> but a lot of people are surprised to learn that Somerville has a poverty rate that is basically the same as Boston's. Mm -hmm. It's about 14, 15 percent. And it has a similar sort of middle income structure to Boston's. Right. So all of the kind of, you know, big forces that are shaping the future of our housing market, our jobs market, um, they're impacting us here in Somerville in pretty much the same way they are you know, the rest of the region. Right. And we have to ask ourselves, you know, what kind of city do we want to be five years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now? Mm. Um, I always say there's, there are two ways to end poverty in a city, and one of them is to drive all the poor people out. And we really don't want to do that. We'd like mm. to be a city that's welcoming and has opportunity for people to, you know, help themselves and be helped by each other. Yeah, um, that's, so. that's a good goal for the city of Somerville. It is. As, as I a, think so. <laughs> as a wholesome community, yeah. hopefully we can follow that. Yeah. I'm um, thinking. Yeah. Um, yes, and, <clears throat> and be be as involved as you um, have the capacity to do so. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with what David was saying and finding out what is the construction happening next door, and yes, talk to the older humans that are yes. out there, <laughs> newly formed city council. That's right. There's a lot of uh -huh. a lot of new people up there. And there's also yeah. a lot of community organizations that Absolutely. are happy to answer any questions yep. that you might have. So um, thank you You're for welcome. joining and for, for adding all of that. And I yeah. hope that um, people learn a little bit more. But also, if there are volunteer opportunities, mm -hmm. are there any ways for people to support you in that? Regard? Sure. Um, we don't use a lot of volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, partly because um, it's doing child care. Sure. Uh, it, being a volunteer in a child care setting, there's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, you have to commit to a fairly regular attendance and there's background checks and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. However, we do have volunteers in the child care program. So okay. if that's something you're really into, contact us okay. and we can, we can make that happen. Um, but we also know other organizations that are in need of volunteers too. So, so again, one-stop shop. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I just got a wonderful volunteer who is really adept at social media, which go. I'm hopeless at. And he's going to be basically doing our tweeting and, and Facebooking and all that cool. uh, for us, which is wonderful. Cool. So you never know. So there's some yep. indirect services and indirect services that you can help out yep. with. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank joining you very today much. and um, to a speedy recovery. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you all for, for watching and to find out more, check out their website on the screen and keep supporting Somerville. We are out.